Okay, one of the things we do when looking at, at probability situations is uh, simulations. Let's say, for example, I want to uh, investigate the probability of Kobe Bryant um, making five free throws in a row. Well, unfortunately, I can't fly Kobe Bryant out here. I don't have a basketball rim available where he can come and shoot free throws. Okay, he probably wouldn't come and do this for Copley High School. So we do a simulation in that regards. And a simulation is basically a chance behavior that accurately reflects the situation in some way, shape, or form. And when you perform the simulation, um, we have to do the, if you remember earlier in the year, Spanish people dance the cha-cha. State, plan, do, and conclude. State is what is the question of interest. So in this question, is how, uh, this situation is um, what's the probability of Kobe Bryant hitting five free throws in a row. Plan would describe um, how to use a chance device to imitate one repetition of the process. So let's assume for a second that uh, Kobe Bryant can make 80% of his free throws, which is four out of five. So I could um, set up, uh, put slips of paper in a hat where eight of them have the word make in them and two of them have the word miss. And I would randomly pick one piece of paper at a time, make or miss, put it back in the paper or in the hat, mix them up out another one and that would be my process and every time I saw the word make he, had, he would simulate him making a free throw and every time I saw the word miss that would represent him missing a free throw and then we're going to perform any repetitions we're going to keep pulling papers out of a hat until we've done this many many times and we'll use our results to actually answer the question um, we can use physical devices like paper, uh, slips of paper and a hat. We can use random numbers like table D in the back of your book is a random number table. Or we can use technology using our calculators, using the random energy feature, we have, which we have done several times already this year. So here's an example of a situation that I might want to simulate. Okay, So let's assume that um, um, there's a lottery at school, and they're going to pull out two students, um, seniors, and whoever's names or numbers come up, um, they're going to win this golden ticket parking lottery, which gives them the prime parking spot in the student lot. Okay? So um, we're going to, and we want to know what the probability of both winners coming from the same AP Stats class. Okay? So we're going to enable um, the, the students in the AP Stats class. For, there's 28 students, so we're going to enable, label them from 1 to 28. And there are a total of 95 seniors who are eligible for this lottery ticket. And so the other students who are not in AP Stats are going to get the numbers from 29 to 95. Notice because of the two-digit numbers, we do have to use the numbers 0, 1 through 0, 9, um, the one-digit numbers. Okay, so we're going to look at table T in the random sorry, table D in the random number table, which is in the back of the book, and looking at row 139, okay? We're going to look at pairs of digits until we see um, two different labels from 0, 1 to 0 to 95 and record whether they're both from the AP Stats class or not. So, for example, if I look at the first two numbers in that row, I see the numbers 55 and 58, okay? Both those numbers come our other, so they did not both come from the AP Stat students. Remember, they have to be the numbers of 1 to 28. So the next pair of numbers, or the next four numbers, are 89 and 94. Again, those are others. 04 and 70. Ah, one was an AP Stat student, but one was not. Then 70 and 84, both came from outside AP Stats. Now notice here, when I looked at the next pair of numbers, I actually ran across the number 98, which is not a number that we're going to use for our simulation. So we just skip it and go to the next digit number, so 10 and 43. And again, 10 came from the AP Stats class, 43 did not. And I continue this on until, if you notice here, 19 and 12 was the first occurrence where both those um, numbers came from the AP Stats students, student 19 and student 12. And we had it happen one more time with student 18 and 19. And the last time when we skipped 00, zero but then 24 and 28 both came from the AP stats. So we did this 18 times, and only three times did we actually get both students come from the AP stats class, which comes out to about 16.7%. Okay, so that we would estimate our probability as being that based on our simulation. Okay, here's another example. This is... Um, Real common, you know, when you get the um, uh, buy the cereals that have the little prizes in them, or you go to McDonald's and they're offering prizes and their Happy Meals or whatever, and you want to get one of every prize that they offer. 
how many boxes of cereal or how many Happy Meals do you have to buy to get one of every one? So this is a simulation. Um, we're not going to go out and buy a whole bunch of Happy Meals or a whole bunch of cereals to do this. We're going to simulate this. So here's a situation where there's a um, Indianapolis collectible cards put in boxes of cereal. And there's five different cards, and those are the five drivers there, from Jeff Gordon down to Danica Patrick and Jimmy Johnson. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the random energy feature of our calculator to simulate buying one box of cereal and looking at which card is inside. Okay, so if I see the number one, there was a Jeff Gordon card. If I see the number three, there's a Tony Student card, etc., etc. And I'm going to do this until I get one of every card. I'm going to count how many boxes of cereal it took to get that. So if you look at the first time I did this right here, you notice the first three boxes, I got the numbers 3, 5, 2, and 1. However, the fourth one, was, the fifth one was 5, which I already had 5. Then I got 2, which I already had that, 3, and then 5, and then finally I got the 4. So in this case, it took me 9 boxes to get one of each of the 5 cards. So I'm going to do it again. And this time, if you notice here, it took 15 boxes. And then I do it again, and there's 10 boxes. Okay, so I'm going to do this lots and lots of time, counting how many time, how many boxes I need to buy before I get all five of them. And so I made a dot plot. Um, this is uh, using Fathom, which is a program you will um, I use a lot in class. Um, but you can see here that we did this 22... Uh, we did this 50 times, sorry, 50 repetitions, and get, taking 23 or more boxes never occurred. We always, out of the 50 times, was able to get all five in fewer than 23 times. In fact, the most we had was 22. So our percentage here would be 0%. In our simulation, out of 50 times, we never have required us to buy 23 boxes to get all five of them. Probability models um, are useful in situations where we don't have to simulate, where we have some known probabilities and we can actually um, do some calculations. And I've shown those already in via tree diagrams. Um, we're going to look at Venn diagrams. We're going to look at uh, lists and area models and all kinds of different things that will give us an idea of what's going on. Um, so definitions you need to include in your um, notes. Um, is the sample space, which was, we abbreviate with the letter S, which is a set of all possible outcomes. What are all the different things that can happen? And the probability model is a description of some chance process that consists of the sample space and the probability for each one. So a classic probability model is a tree diagram. What's the probability of flipping a coin? So I can make a tree diagram. All the different outcomes, there's my sample space, heads and tails, and I have to include the probability in each case, which in this case is both 0.5. Remember, the total of these two branches does have to total one if I truly have all every outcome possible. So this would be a probability model. Very simple one, but it is a probability model. Okay, here's another situation. Let's say I'm going to roll a pair of dice, uh, one red and one green, and I'm going to add up the results. So here's the sample space. There are 36 different outcomes that I can um, roll from a pair of ones to one two all the way to a pair of sixes there are 36 different outcomes and since the, assuming the dice are fair each outcome is equally likely that means the probability of getting any particular outcome would be one out of 36 so getting a red two and a green five would be one out of 36 so this is an example of the sample space a list of all the outcomes and the probability of each event which in this case do they are equal because each one is just as likely to happen as another one so let's use this model here to determine um, some probabilities. First of all, an event is a collection of outcomes that we're looking at based on a probability situation. So let's assume in this dice rolling um, uh, situation that my event, event is, what's the probability of rolling a sum of five? So I look at my um, sample space. There were 36 different outcomes, and I list down all the ones where the sum is five. So I could roll a one and a four, a two and a three, a three and a two, and a four and a one. So the probability of rolling a five then would be four possible outcomes out of a total of 36, which is my sample space. So the probability of rolling a sum of a five would be four out of 36. Suppose event B is defined as a sum not five. What is the probability of rolling a uh, sum that is anything but five? Which we use the notation probability of A complement 
which in this case is the same as the probability of b. Well, remember that rolling the sum of rolling not an a, and the ro I'm sorry, the sum of rolling not a five and the sum of rolling a five has to be one because that's all possible outcomes. So it's one minus four out of thirty-six, which in this case would be thirty-two out of thirty-six. That would be the probability of the complement of a, or the probability of rolling a, a sum that is not equal to five. Please add these uh, notes into your notes uh, or a compositional book and watch the next video when you get a chance.